Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Today we're going to be talking about four different ways you can optimize your tick in game. Now, before we get started, I do want to talk about some misconceptions when it comes to tick. A lot of people will have the misunderstanding that tick should never be used or uh, this should be avoided at all costs. And now, definitely, you don't want to put heavy, heavy calculations on there. Um, you want to try and be a bit more vet driven. Um, but there are definitely times when you need tick and things you want to do on tick. So we're going to talk about how you can optimize it in a few different ways. So first, let's go ahead and take a look um, without having done anything, no test article, just plain flat out, you know, sort of what performance am I looking at in game? Now, this is while recording, so be aware this is a little lower um, than I'd normally see in level. Um, but it looks like, you know, we're sitting anywhere from... 60 to 100 frames a second, just depending on you know what actually is going on in the scene. Um, and let's actually fly for a second. As you can see, you know we can take off, um, get some good speed, turn pretty well. All right. So let's go ahead and now take a look at what we can do to sort of mess with that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we've got here this test article, right? This is going to run it a little bit slower. Um, so let's actually go ahead and just connect this up. And what this is doing is it's just a simple summation. Um, we're taking in the current index. Um, we're passing it into here where we're then going through and looping through whatever the index currently is. Um, and then we're taking that index and adding it to this temp and then passing that back in. So think about it like this is it's basically counting um, 1 through 100. And as it's doing, it's passing in whatever the current number is. Let's say it's 50. And then it's counting from 0 to 50 again, and then adding it here to this um, number. And then every time it runs that function, it's passing this back out. So basically, we're running two for loops in parallel. Now, if we add this, of course, we're going to see a pretty significant drop in our frame rate. Um, yeah, as you can see, we're sitting around 40s to 50s. So, you know, a good 10, 15 frames a second. Um, because we're running, you know, hundreds of computations every single frame. But as you can see, it's like, yeah, especially when we're throttling, you can see we're, we're getting into the low 40s, so almost 20 frames a second. Um, and, so it says, and we're no longer hitting that peak of 100, which means we're now being bottlenecked by the CPU because we're no longer jumping up but to, to higher levels. So we're definitely being bottlenecked here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do to actually fix that problem. Now, there's a couple things you can do um, when you're actually looking at your player or whatever, you know, you're actually controlling in the game. Um, you'll have, see you have something called start with tick enabled, tick interval, and things like that. There's a few different options when it comes to tick. Now, one of the easiest things you can do is, for example, let's say you only need this function, you know, for a short period of time during a specific part of the game where you need to run certain calculations. Um, you can do something here where you can set the actor tick enabled and disabled. Um, so let's say you didn't you didn't have the rest of this. All you had was just this one function, and let's say you just had to run it during you know that period of time, and you want to do it with tick. You can just enable it and disable it based on you know whatever event is going on. Um, you just pass in the set actor tick enabled or disabled, um, just depending on what you're doing. Now of course this isn't necessarily very flexible because you're setting all of the tick to either disabled or enabled. Um, so let's actually take a look at our second option here, uh, which is a little bit more flexible and a little bit more useful in a lot of other situations. Um, and that's actually going to be this tick interval. Now, uh, this tick interval, of course, you know, if we go to set point one, um, for something like this function, which isn't necessarily super dependent on the exact frame rate you're running, uh, it's not as important. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, just running that calculation, as you can see, you know, we're getting back closer to what we were before, uh, mid 50s with occasionally hitting the 70s. Um, it's a little bit closer, still not, not quite the same. Um, but if you'll take a look, you know, my ship's rotation, because I want it smooth, is based off of tick. Therefore, it's rotating very slow. And not just that it's rotating slow, that you, you could fix by just upping the turning rate, but it's actually rotating. Um, in a way that is very stuttery. It's it's sort of stuttering because it's not rotating on every frame. Um, so you see it's, it's very, almost seems laggy despite not actually being a low frame rate. And so with that, you know, it's like, 
So by setting this tick interval, you know, you can affect a lot of things that you don't actually want to affect. Um, so let's actually take a look at our third option here, which is actually putting it on a timer. So let's remove this from here. And we'll go ahead and refresh. Now, as you can see here, I've created a timer. Um, this is called pseudo tick. Now, what this does is um, on begin play, we're going to call the pseudo tick. So let's actually go up here to my begin play and just call pseudo tick. And what this will do is this will call and set timer by event to that point one. So remember that same point one we set the tick to earlier. Um, and set to looping. So it's all going to be, it's going to be calling the exact same function with the exact same amount of calls. Um, but what it's doing is it's calling it on a timer instead of calling it directly in tick. So we can actually put it at a lower um, rate. So we can actually even put it down to, let's say like 0.5. Now the cool thing with this is because we've separated that out, we get the benefit of the performance boost. As you can see here, we're back up to pretty close to what we were at default without that calculation, um, you know, 60s to 70s. And if we accelerate, we can see we also turn and accelerate just like normal. And see, we're even hitting up to back up to the 90s and 100s like we would be. Um, so you can see that's a much better option and that it's a lot cleaner. And the cool thing with this is you can actually turn timers on and off. Um, you can clear and invalidate them based on certain conditions. There's just a lot more flexibility with the timer um, for things that don't need to be on tick. Now, of course, you have things like I was talking about earlier with my ship tick and stuff that have to be on tick to make it very smooth. Uh, so with that, let's say your, you know, the code you're running actually does need to be done on tick um, for whatever reason. Um, you know, you, you've done this and it just isn't low enough. You know, you can set this low and low and low, but eventually you basically get back to being on tick. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually replace this um, with a C++ function. That's our fourth option here is going to be a C++ function. So we go ahead and plug this in. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug that in and then we'll actually just remove the pseudo tick. That way we make sure that's not ticking. All right. And all this is, is this is the exact same function that I had before, but just written in a what I call a, a player calculation function library. And so all this does is it takes in that float n, um, and then it, it does the iterations based on what numbers passed in, adds them to a result, uh, temporary value, and then returns that result back. So it's the exact same thing that, that function is doing just in C++ instead of in blueprints. And so let's go ahead and take a look here. So we go ahead and jump back in. And as you can see, we're hitting 60s, 70s, 80s, all depending on other factors rather than by the calculation itself. And if we go ahead and accelerate, as you can see, we're accelerating just as quickly as we were before. So what that means is if we're, if we're looking at this right, the timer allowed us to tick less often, but it meant that we lost out on some of that smoothness but we got a lot more performance. The C++ function that we wrote, which is, while it's a relatively simple C++ function and it would take a little bit of time to set up, um, this ran just as fast as the timer did, but while still allowing you to keep it on event tick. And so that is the biggest deciding factor, I think, when it comes to all of these different options is you can kind of combine them. You know, we've got the set actor tick enabled, um, you know, and we've got, you know, you can even have like a, a, a Boolean here, you know, run calculation so that way it doesn't go past this point if you're um, not needing this calculation to be run now, there's a lot of different things you can do to optimize it but the biggest thing i think you want to take away here is that tick is not something you need to necessarily avoid you just need to make sure you're using it in a smarter way um, and in my mind timers or C++ functions are going to be your best bet to actually optimizing these down. The benefit of the C++ function is it's faster out of the gate. Um, in fact, you could probably still drag it down here and use it here instead. Um, and then what would happen is you'd even notice even more performance improvement because what you're going to notice is if you're doing this, while the timer is only running every 0.5 seconds, um, 
what this means is that every time you run the timer, every 0.5 seconds that this loops, you're not doing that computationally heavy um, calculation. Instead, you're using the C++ function. And so you can see there's many different ways to combine these and try to eke out performance wherever you can, depending on, of course, your use case. Uh, but yeah, so that is the majority of what I want to cover today to kind of show you guys that there are a lot of options when it comes to sort of optimizing tick. Um, that it's not this big, bad, scary thing that you can really use it to good effect um, when needed. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to see me cover, definitely leave a comment down below. But otherwise, good luck and good hunting.